Okay, here we are. Free trib rapture moment number four. One of the common arguments that you're going to get from post tribbers is what about the martyrs? They'll say, the Bible talks about Christians being martyred, and so therefore, why shouldn't we expect to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, through the Great Tribulation? You know, because after all, there were martyrs in the past, so why wouldn't we be martyred now? You're going to get that one. And they'll say, the Bible says about that Christians are slaughtered. So let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now let's look at the list of things which cannot separate a Christian from Jesus Christ. First you have tribulation. Next, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword, death, life, angels, principalities, powers, things present, things to come, height, depth, any other creature. Those are the things that are listed there in Romans 8, 35 through 39. Those things can't separate a Christian from the love of Christ. But, I'm going to show you that they can and will separate a tribulation saint from Jesus Christ. You see, after the rapture, which is pre-tribulation, after the rapture, things change. There's a new dispensation, there's a new system that those people are under, and th these things that are listed there in those verses, they can and will separate somebody, a tribulation saint, from the Lord, Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 12 says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man, the key there being any, okay, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Two systems in the time of Jacob's trouble to be saved. Keeping the commandments of God, the greatest one being in that time period, don't take the mark, and the faith of Jesus. You have to have faith in Jesus and keep the commandments. That's what it says right there, right there in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. You can't duck that. Now, what will be the motivation for taking the mark of the beast? Those people that live in that time of Jacob's trouble, what is going to be their motivation? Think about it. Tribulation. If you don't take the mark, are you going to have tribulation? Yeah. How about distress? How about persecution? How about famine? You won't be able to buy food. Talk about famine, yeah. How about nakedness, peril, sword, death? You say, what about life? That's the next one on the list. What about life? Well, if you want to keep your life, you're going to have to take the mark of the beast. If you want life, if you want to live down here on the earth in that time period, you're going to have to take the mark of the beast. So, will those things separate somebody from the love of Christ? Yes. In that time period, those things that are listed there in Romans 8, 35 through 39, they will separate somebody from the love of Christ. If they put the the persecution, if that becomes more important to them that, you know, to escape the persecution, you take the mark of the beast, if they put that above Jesus Christ, then yeah, they go to hell. They are separated from the love of Christ at that point in time. So, those verses don't work for a somebody in the time of Jacob's trouble. What about spiritual forces that will be present on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble? What about that? Angels, principalities, and powers. Romans 8, 35 through 39 says, Who shall separate us? Well, will angels, principalities, and powers in the time of Jacob's trouble, will they work to separate people from the love of Christ? Yeah. How about the greatest power that this world's ever going to see outside of Jesus Christ? 
the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. Is he going to separate people from the love of Christ? If you take the, the mark and you worship the beast, will you be separated from the love of Christ? Yes. You see, Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39 is teaching eternal security. You don't have eternal security if you go into the time of Jacob's trouble. So you can't use the martyr argument for people in the tribulation. It doesn't work. How about things which are present? Well, things that are present right now can't separate us from the love of Christ, but in the time of Jacob's trouble, the things that are present then sure can. That can separate, separate you from the love of Christ. How about things that are to come? Yeah. There's going to be things coming all the time there in the time of Jacob's trouble. You know, all those judgments. You'll be able to just read down through the book of Revelation and see what's coming next. Are those things that are coming, those things to come, will they separate you from the love of Christ in that time? You better believe it. You better believe it. How about height and depth? You say, well, now wait, that one wouldn't work out. You say, the height and depth there, that wouldn't work out. Those things couldn't separate you from the love of Christ. What would that be in the time of Jacob's trouble? Revelation chapter 6, verse 4 says, And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. You see, height and depth, right now, over there, you can see the heights of the mountaintops. Down here, we're in the depths of the valley. Height, depth. I'm not worried about being separated from the love of Christ right now. I'm not worried about having to compromise or whatever, take the mark of the beast, you know. If it's the time of Jacob's trouble, if I have to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, this is the kind of place we're going to have to come to. But guess what? In that time period, the wild beasts are going to be after you. Even if you can escape and find this place as being peaceful, you're going to have to deal with the wild beasts, the animals. Not to mention the atmospheric changes, the environmental changes are going to come from God's judgments coming on the earth. So the temptation is going to be continually there to take the mark, to compromise, which will make you separated from the love of Christ. Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39 do not apply to tribulation saints. Okay? The very fact is they can't claim it. And you say, well, but I don't know. I, I still think that the body of Christ has suffered down through the centuries and, and that uh, if the body of Christ has suffered and been martyred for Jesus Christ, then certainly we could be expecting to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Well, let me ask you another question which post-tribbers don't like to think about. Let me ask you this question. Who brought the persecution on the martyrs? Was it God or man? It would be man. Okay? The Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church were the ones that shed the blood of the martyrs. Alright? Who's going to bring the time of Jacob's trouble? God or man? That would be God. You see, the purpose of the time of Jacob's trouble is to purify the Jewish people, to convince them that this book is true, the New Testament, you know, as well as the Old Testament. That's the purpose of the time of Jacob's trouble. So in that time period, God is going to be judging them. Why? Because look at them, they're wicked right now. The Jewish people have not accepted Jesus as their Messiah, but they will. Okay? That's the purpose of that time period. There will be no Christian martyrs in that time period. Okay, there will be tribulation saints that are killed by the Antichrist. Okay? They will be killed for having the testimony of Jesus Christ and for the Word of God. Alright? That's what they're going to be killed by, but it's God who unleashes the Antichrist. That's not the same thing as what happened in the past. Okay? Right now, there isn't anything that can separate you from the love of Christ if you are truly saved. If you're born again, you're going to heaven, whether you like it or not. In the time of Jacob's trouble, you can be separated from the love of Christ. You can be separated by joining the Antichrist system, taking the mark, worshiping the beast. You will be separated from the love of Christ at that point. So Romans 8, 35 through 39 does not work for a tribulation saint. Those verses are for Christians in the church age. Think about that.